Hi, I'm Bill Carmody, and I'm the Marketing Whisperer. Today, I am really happy to have John Ale here with me, who is an investor in Tap Influence and a wealth of insight around marketing software platforms. So, John, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Bill? Why don't you give everyone a little bit about your background, because you have a very fascinating background. Sure. Thanks for having me on. I, uh, so I'm John Ale at Norm Mosley Partners. We are an early stage growth equity investor in uh, particularly focused on marketing software. Uh, my partner, uh, Mike Elliott, and I participate in the board of directors at Tap Influence. Excellent. Well, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show is because you actually have a number of insights when it comes to uh, looking at marketing software. And what I really appreciate sort of about your unique perspective is you're constantly looking at software and looking at sort of what's going to make the most to invest in. And I thought what was fascinating about your insights around sort of influencer marketing is that, you know, the metrics for the most part, you know, are off in the sense that most people who are an influencer marketing are still focusing on reach. They we should be talking about ROI and sales metrics. And uh, I, I would love for you to sort of comment on that and sort of provide your perspective. So that was very, very on point. Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's actually the primary reason why uh, we, uh, you know, part of our investment thesis in TAP Influence. So, you know, whenever we look at investment, we always ask ourselves, you know, what is the return on investment that the solution provides to customers and why is it better than the status quo? And, you know, the two most direct measures of ROI are either increasing sales or decreasing costs. And so TAP, not only do they have an incredible team with promise to CEO leading the way, but they were, you know, a leader in this nascent form of marketing that delivers 11 times higher return on investment than all their digital advertising. And the ROI piece, I mean, this is measured by direct sales, not vanity metrics like page views or reach or Facebook share. And so with this solution, we saw it solved two major problems. And the first was within influencer marketing. And the second, more important problem, we thought it could uh, be a really good uh, catalyst in shifting this uh, marketing and ad spend allocation that's out there. Well, and I think that's what's fascinating to me because I've been doing uh, digital marketing for the last 22 years. And, you know, in 1995, February of 1995, we built one of the very first banner ads for MasterCard. It was their very first banner ad. It was one of the very first uh, ads on Yahoo. And what's fascinating to me is at that time, we were getting a 44% click-through rate. And now we're getting a 0.04% click-through rate. So, <laughs> like, you know, how my health time has changed. And yet, this is sort of what the industry has built up in terms of their, their, uh, their, their tolerance, if you will, uh, for digital advertising. So to me, it's, it's, you know, we're still obsessed about the wrong things. We're still looking at impressions, we're looking at clicks, but we're not looking at sort of how does digital media actually drive ROI and sales. And to me, that was what was really drew me to Tap Influence and their platform more than a lot of others that are out there around influencer marketing. No, I, I, I totally agree. I think return on investment, you know, is the most objective way to measure success in business. And, you know, and to measure ROI in marketing, it's what is a sales lift was for a campaign based on a particular amount of money you spent on that campaign. And, you know, this product tap influence can show that. Whereas, you know, I just don't understand why other people are focused on, you know, reach and everything else as we were discussing. Well, and that's just it. I mean, I think what ends up happening is, is that there's sort of this voodoo magic happening, which is like, hey, don't look behind the curtain. You know, your impressions are great. Your metrics are all fine. You're doing a fantastic job in your marketing. And you're like, wait a second. Did any of this marketing drive a sale? You know, just what? Right. Did it do anything? It's like, because I don't care how many clicks I got. I don't care how many impressions I got. If this is not driving ROI. And here's what's interesting to me is that Tap Influence was the very first company to actually be able to prove the ROI in store. See, I mean, it's one thing if you can do a digital end-to-end -end campaign for online sales, and that's fine, and that's been great for pixel tracking. We've been able to do that for a while. But being able to anonymize the data with loyalty card shopper data and be able to push that all the way through down to an actual conversion in a shopping cart is a whole different matter. And to me, that should be leading the way in the industry, and this is what we should be talking about. Don't you agree? I, I totally agree. I think both. I mean, if you can see both in-store and online, I mean, you're, you're covering basically 99% of the basis, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think that's the thing is that if marketing isn't accountable, why are you doing it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, it's about the KPIs. You're like, what are your key performance indicators? And if your key, key performance indicators are shares and likes, you know, you really have to be asking yourself, is this driving my brand? Is this driving my, my actual relevance? And then ultimately, is that translating to sales and how can I prove it? Right? I know. I agree. I mean, I dare someone to go and tell the CEO we've got shares and likes, but not sales. Whereas you can show them sales. I think they, they'd much <laughs> rather, they'd much prefer hearing that. You can't eat likes. Exactly. Exactly. 
So, so I guess, you know, in terms of sort of just your purview, I mean, you've, you've been a, an investor in, in, in tap influence and I, and you and I are both very huge uh, fans of promise. She's been an amazing CEO at tap influence. My question to you is looking at sort of other softwares in the category, whether it's influencer marketing software or whether it's just particular marketing software, what are some of the up and coming things that the uh, Inc audience should be paying attention to? No, I think the biggest thing is uh, with influencer marketing, you know, we, we, this survey that uh, I think we might get into later showed that, you know, 44% of respondents don't think that influencer marketing is new or improved. And that means the cat's out of the bag and we just need to show them the magic of influencer marketing. But the issue is there's a lot of workflow problems right now uh, getting through an influencer marketing. You know, when we were looking at the space, uh, investing in TAP about six to eight months ago, you know, competitors either did social media analytics on the back end or they helped you find influencers and they didn't do both. And we found out that TAP does both these tasks and it does it better than these specialty players. So, you know, it's an end-to-end -end solution. It has like nearly 50,000 influencers that have already opted into its platform and it can easily connect, it can easily connect with like on behalf of an agency or brand. So with those 50,000 influencers, a brand can find the right influencer based on her engagement with like a particular demographic and a particular product. And so keep continuing on the workflow, brands can then partner with the most relevant influencers. They share a post promoting a product on various social media platforms to their highly engaged audience. And then after the post is released, Tap Influence can track that performance of that post and tie it directly to sales. And so we saw no other solution does that. So, you know, what's interesting about that study that you referenced is that, you know, if, if, uh, if, if people are not seeing influencer marketing as new, right, then the question is, why are not more people doing it? Because to me, it's such an obvious thing that basically if, you're, if your banner ads are not performing as well as they used to, the cost of basically pushing anything from Facebook is continuing to increase. Then the real question is, why aren't you doing other alternatives? What do you think the answer to that is? I think we, I think we just need to, uh, you know, stand on top of a mountain and keep shouting. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the marketer. You've been doing this forever. You, you should tell us what we need to do. But I mean, the most important thing is, uh, I think the big problem right now is, uh, you know, brands and agencies are wasting billions of dollars and hindering their sales potential with their current ad spending allocations. And, you know, we think, t you know, influencer marketing and TAP in particular can steal this budget with its 11x ROI value proposition. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, what, what's interesting is when you look at the studies around things like, um, you know, uh, programmatic media, and you're saying that you, on average, there's between six and eight middlemen between the time that the budget is cut from the brand all the way through to when the media publisher is actually publishing the content. Combine that with the fact that because there are seven, eight of these middlemen in the, in the process, you're getting something like 50 cents on every dollar actually going to media. And so like, you know, now you sort of have a triage effect where, you know, you've got a tonnage model with programmatic it's 50 cents on the dollar in terms of what's actually getting out there and then on top of that you're looking at sort of 0.04 percent click-through rate it's like oh my god <laughs> yeah, no and what's crazy i think i saw i saw a stat in terms of what's being in the u.s what's being spent on display ads still is 11 to 12 billion dollars that's right. Yeah. And, and, and that to me is that nobody's sort of calling out a timeout and saying, hey guys, wait a second, this isn't working. You know, it's like you might spend that kind of billions of dollars to basically put this out on the digital networks. But if you're not getting a good ROI, why are you continuing to spend money there? You know? No, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And we wish we, wish we had the answer and uh, we wish we could uh, tip the market more. Uh, to focus more on sales lift rather than the other vanity metrics out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose this question to the Inc audience. So if you're watching this video now, I ask you this specific question. Why are people spending more money on digital advertising like banner ads and Facebook ads, as opposed to sort of looking at things that tend to have an 11 X return on investment higher than those digital platforms. I'm really curious why people do it. I suspect that it's something along the lines of the fact that this is just momentum. You know, we, 22 years ago, we started doing, banner ads and it's just the way it's been right so for two decades we've got all that momentum the flywheel spinning people are just used to doing it that way right and i think that's probably one of the reasons but i'd love to hear from the audience as to what it is that they think the, the real reason is so we'll report back once we find more of that information no i'd love to see their responses Good. Uh, anything else you want to cover today? We've covered a lot of good ground around influencer marketing, tap influence, their platform, all the partnerships there, good research study. Anything else we haven't covered off on? No, I just say just in terms of general, you know, not even only in digital ads, but just how much money is being spent on uh, TV, radio, and even billboards still in the US alone, that's about $90 billion. And those are still very opaque forms of marketing. And it's still 
I, I, <laughs> I always find it fascinating that the Super Bowl, uh, you know, the, how much it costs to pay for a super, a 30 second Super Bowl ad goes up y- every year when no one knows sort of the reach of that. I mean, they can try it directly, have some direct response uh, tied to it on Twitter or Facebook afterwards, but you really can't tie it directly to sales. And that's a pretty, pretty large sum of money to pay for uh, which something you can't measure. Agreed. Agreed. Totally. Well, good. Well, you know, John, I want to thank you for being on the program today. John Ale, uh, you've done, an, uh, I, I love your insights. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with sort of your background, what you've been doing on the investment community side. And I love your perspective in terms of influencer marketing. So thank you for joining us today. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for having me, Bill. My pleasure.